Boy, that's a lot of maneuvering just to do a couple of songs. But that's the way it goes. The, the verse that says, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. And that includes Wednesday nights too. You know what I mean? Let's get a little volume here and we'll be ready. As we gather, may your spirit work within us. As we gather, may we glorify your name. Knowing well that as our hearts begin to worship, we'll be blessed because we came. We'll be blessed because we came. As we gather, may your spirit work within us. As we gather, may we glorify your name. Knowing well that as our hearts begin to worship, we'll be blessed because we came. We'll be blessed because we came. And we're cutting things short tonight. We're only going to do one more of the songs that I had planned. But what a great song. This this is the gospel in a song from start to finish. Y'all know it. We do it pretty regularly. So if you'll join me, you'll, you'll know what it is, okay? In Christ alone my hope is found. My life, my strength, my song, this cornerstone, this solid ground, firm through the fiercest drought and storm. What heights of love, what depths of peace, when fears are stilled, when striving cease, my comforter, my all in all. Here in the love of Christ I stand. In Christ alone, who took on flesh, fullness of God in helpless babe, this gift of love and righteousness, scorned by the ones he came to save. Till on that cross where Jesus died, the wrath of God was satisfied. For every sin on him was laid. Here in the death of Christ I live. My favorite verse. There in the ground his body lay, light of the world in darkness slain. Then bursting forth in glorious day, up from the grave he rose again. And as he stands in victory, since curse has lost its grip on me, for I am his and he is mine, bought with the precious blood of Christ. No guilt in life, no fear in death, this is the power of Christ in me. From life's first cry to final breath, Jesus commands my destiny. No power on hell, no scheme of man can ever pluck me from his hand till he returns or calls me home. Here in the power of Christ, I'll stand. To 
until he returns or calls me home. Here in the power of Christ, I'll stand. And the amen goes there. Commands. Has there ever been that person in your life that when they, uh, when they told you to do something, you just knew you better do it? <laughs> I mean, I know for most folks it is. It, it has been for me. It, uh, it, it has been uh, probably for all of us. Uh, and yet it seems like we've got this mentality that there's things that the Bible tells us that we ought to be doing that we just kind of say, well... You know, I'll do that if I want to. You know, when did, when did God's command uh, become less important than us telling somebody else what to do, whether it be our children or grandchildren or, you know, whatever the case may be, somebody that works under us and, you know, we're the boss and we say, hey, do this, and if they don't do it, they get in trouble. You know, how is it that we expect the fact that sometimes, well, if I don't do what God tells me to do, uh, I'm, I don't. I don't want to get in trouble. You know, I don't expect to, to get in trouble. And yet, God's commands. Just the idea there, uh, of that command is it's, it's an imperative idea. Uh, it's one that must take place. It's one that must happen around us. God doesn't leave us a choice. The only choice we have is to choose God's choice. Okay, is to do things God's way. Now, I know we mess up. And I know we don't always do that, but God's word is very specific. And, uh, and there's some things that he tells us to do. And so I've gone through and pulled out just a few just different scripture verses tonight uh, of just many, really more of a reminder of things that the Bible tells us that we ought to be doing, you know, that we ought to strive to be doing, that we can't just take for granted <clears throat> and we can't just say, well, I'll do that or not do that if I want to. Uh, the first one is found in 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 15 and 16. 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 15 and 16. But as the one who called you is holy, you also are to be holy in all your conduct. For it is written, be holy because I am holy. Now, when we think about that command to be holy... Most of the time, the first thing that pops into our mind as a Christian is, well, I can't do that. You know, I, I can't be holy. I, I'm a sinner. You know, I, I'm just a human being. There's no way that I can be holy. But I want you to understand that not striving to be holy is wrong. You know, I mean, granted, nobody in this room is going to live a perfect life. But as a Christian, Everybody in this room ought to strive to live a perfect life. We ought to strive to be holy. And if for no other reason, because God told us to, you know. He told us to be holy, to be holy because he is holy. I mean, everything we do as a Christian, our, our life and lifestyle and, and the, the decisions we make uh, as a Christian, as we grow in our faith and grow in our relationship with him, should be to be more and more like him, okay? To be more and more holy. I mean, how many times have you and I both made decisions that we knew God really didn't want us to make? Well, I mean, we just totally went the other direction, okay? We wanted to do what we wanted to do, not what God wanted us to do. There's nothing holy about that. And so there's, there's that opportunity for us to truly, I believe, be holy in, in what we do and what we say and, and in who we are. Uh, being holy is that, that part of our life that separates us from everybody else, okay? I mean, it's, it's hard enough to live in this world and, and be separate from lost people in this world, okay? Because sometimes we act like we're lost, okay? Sometimes we mess up like everybody else does, 
You know, but the idea to be holy is to be separate, to be something else, something special. And it's not a maybe, it's a command that God has given to us to be holy. 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 11. I'm going to just, again, throw some different verses out there at you tonight and just share a few thoughts with you. 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 11. Finally, brothers and sisters, rejoice, become mature, be encouraged, be of the same mind, be at peace, and the love of and the and the God of love and peace will be with you. What does that mean? Well, to me, I guess there's a couple of ideas. You can say it means to be be perfect in that sense. I, I don't necessarily like that terminology. I like really the idea that it means to be together. That we ought to be together, first of all, with each other as believers in Christ, but but more importantly, we need to be together with the Lord. You know, we need to be in step with Him. Rejoice. Become become mature. <laughs> you know, be mature there. Uh, man, that, that's something that all of us need to continue to, to march forward with. You know, we, we have a, you know, we have this mentality that we grow up. You know, and hopefully kids do grow up. But everybody in this room, we know some grown adults that still act like kids, right? You know, sometimes that's a good thing. There's nothing wrong with that per se. But from a Christian perspective, okay, there's, you know, as we grow up, we don't need to keep acting like a kid. We need to become mature in our faith. We need to be together, be perfect in that sense. Be encouraged, he says. Be of the same mind there as Christ is, okay? So we are not only to be holy, we are to be together, you know, be, be, be one uh, in our relationship with Christ. Psalms chapter 46, verse 10, and of course this is going to be a, a verse that you've heard many, many times, but it says, to be still and know what? That I am God. Why in the world does the psalmist tell us to be still? And to know, or really, really, God's telling us to be still and know that I am God. Man, we live in a world today where there are so many distractions, not only with adults, with kids. I mean, they're, they're, they're glued to their phones. They're glued to video games. We're glued to our phones. We're glued to the news, to the TV, to a computer screen, to, to anything and everything that's out there in the world and, and we don't stop long enough for us to be able to uh, really just be still and listen to God. Be still, that verse 10 says, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. But the only way that we can exalt God is to be still and really understand who God is. And so in our hearts and in our lives, ladies and gentlemen, we need, a, we need a moment of stillness. You know, every day, I think, as Christians, we need to, we need to be still for a little bit. You know, that's that quiet time. That's that prayer time. That's that Bible study time. It's, it's there for a reason, okay? But just sometimes just, just to be still. You know, as we pray and we talk to God and we, all these things we share with God, Never forget in your prayer time to just stop and listen for a little while. God wants to talk to us. His Holy Spirit wants to touch our lives. And if we, if we don't stop long enough and be still to listen long enough, we, can't, we may just miss out on what God is telling us to do. So he says to be still there. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8. <coughs> Excuse me. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8, it says, Be sober-minded, be alert. Again, you know, when we think of the word sober, we've, we've got this mentality, oh, somebody's had too much to drink. Well, granted, that's, yeah, we don't need to be drinking. I guess you'd say that for sure. But that's not what this verse is talking about. He says, be sober-minded, be alert. You know, pay attention to, to what's going on around us. Your adversary, the devil, is prowling around like a roaring lion looking for anyone he can devour. If we don't pay attention spiritually in this world today, we can fall just like that. 
If we're not paying attention to where we are spiritually, to what we're doing spiritually, if we're not paying attention to our families, you know, man, the old devil will be there before we know it. Something will happen. It'll happen with our kids. It can happen with our grandkids. It can happen in our marriages. It can happen in our churches, okay? The devil is there. He's, he's doing everything he can to destroy the kingdom of God. And, and I hope and pray that, that, you know, you here and those at home that are listening really believe that. I mean, we, we are fighting a spiritual battle in this world in which we live. And I think it's getting harder and harder of a battle each and every day with things that are happening in our nation and in our country and in this world. And you and I, as God's children, man, we need to be sober-minded. We need to be alert. We definitely need to be paying attention to what's going on around us. Not only that, he says in Revelations chapter 2, verse 10, got two or three more I want to share with you. Revelations chapter 2, verse 10 says, don't be afraid of what you are about to suffer. Look, the devil is about to throw some of you into prison to test you, and you will, be, you will experience affliction for 10 days. Be faithful to the point of death, and I will give you the crown of life. He says to be faithful. Be faithful even to the point of death. We have in this nation been very blessed to, to live so far in a nation that has allowed us to worship the way we would like to worship and, and not been thrown in jail because of that. I, I, I read this and I see things that are happening around the world in other countries and, and without going too deep into detail into a country that I've traveled into before, and knowing that now that government in, in traveled into that country and spoke with some secret churches in that country, and now knowing that that, that nation is, is taking people from those secret churches and throwing them into jail, you know, for being nothing else other than just a Christian. It is happening around the world. It, I pray, will never happen here but folks, even if that kind of, of uh, persecution doesn't happen to us, we do live in a world and we do live in a country where, let's be honest, Christians are the guys you pick on nowadays. You know, the, the TV picks on us and the news picks on us and political people pick on us. I mean, we're, we're the bad guys, it seems like. And, and in the midst of all the stuff that's happening around us, in the midst of what's, you know, revelations, I mean, you know, God's talking about the end times here. You know, he just says when things really begin to fall apart, what are we supposed to do? Be faithful. Be faithful, he says. You know, no matter what's going on around you, be faithful. You know, here, even if you get thrown in jail, he says, be faithful. Be faithful to the point of death. He says, and I will give you the crown of life. Um, it's not an option, another command, just to be faithful. Uh, and in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 18. Uh, Ephesians chapter 5, 18 says, and don't get drunk with wine. And I'm not going to talk about drinking tonight per se which leads to reckless living, but to be filled by the Spirit. You know, we live, again, today with the opportunity to, for our lives to be touched by so many things. You know, and even, even as Christians, so many things. Um, things, things change. Uh, life changes. Mentalities change. Uh, I can only imagine that, uh, Brother Bobby, when you were a young child, uh, the idea of Christians drinking was probably a big-time no-no of that day and time. I know it was for like my dad when he was a kid. You know, you, Christians didn't drink. We have a younger generation today that seems to be okay with it, as Christians seem to be okay with it. Uh, 
the Bible hasn't changed. I'll just say it that way. Uh, the Bible says here, don't be drunk with wine, or by wine, I think you can say with any alcohol. You know, I'm not going to say that, uh, that to drink, to take one drink is, is a sinful thing. Uh, but it do well say that to be drunk is a sinful thing. I think the Bible is very clear on that. Uh, and he tells us why. He says it leads to reckless living. You know, we're going to be controlled by something. Something's going to be the, the, the supreme aspect of our life. And for some people, if they take that first drink of alcohol, it, it takes over their life. We need to be careful from that. So here, Paul is saying to the church now, okay, don't be drunk with wine. And, and part of what was happening back there, and just kind of put it a little bit more into context, you know, when they were having their dinner on the ground, you know, everybody brought their meals to the church and they were having their dinners on the ground. And here, you, can you imagine us having dinner on the ground back here in the Family Life Center and, and people are sitting around the tables drinking their wine? But not only just drinking their wine, they were drinking their wine and getting drunk. Okay? I mean, I, you know, let's talk about going to a little bit of an extreme there. Okay? And, and so Paul is saying to the church here, don't be drunk with wine. It leads to reckless living. It leads to acting stupid, but be filled by the Spirit. Allow the Spirit of God to be what's in control of our lives. Allow the Spirit of God to move among us the way that, uh, that He desires to move among us as well. And the last thing from the Old Testament, Isaiah 52, 11. Isaiah 52, 11 says, Leave, leave, go out from there. Do not touch anything unclean. Go out from her. Purify yourselves, you who carry the vessels of the Lord. In other words, again, Isaiah is talking about things that are happening in, in the temple and things to touch or don't touch. But the idea there is to be clean. You know, there are just some things in this world, some things in our own lives individually that we just don't need to touch. You know, if you've got an issue with alcohol, don't touch it, okay? If you've got an issue with drugs, don't touch it. You know, if you've got an addiction to something, don't touch it. You know, he says here, just be clean. Be what God would have us to be in those aspects and areas uh, of our life. And so it takes that, uh, I think, that mentality of trying to be the very best we can be so that we can serve the Lord the way we're supposed to. Uh, it's it's going to be hard to serve the Lord if you're not doing what God wants you to do. It's going to be hard to really be faithful to God if you're not living up to, to at least what you can live up to. You know, if you're falling into the trap of, some of these sins and some of these moments and, and the devil's having his way in your life, it's going to be hard to be everything God would have you to be. And so there are some things the Bible tells us, and these are just a few verses that I pulled out. I'm sure there are many others uh, where the Bible says over and over again, here's something that you're supposed to do. Be this, be holy, be, be perfect, be still, be sober, Whatever the case may be, be clean, you know, in all of these areas of life. And so uh, I pray that we'll follow him through this. Let's pray. Father, thank you for just a few moments together tonight. Father, now uh, in coming together and in praying together, Father, we ask for your blessings. We ask for your uh, mercy and grace in all of these areas, Father. Just may thy will be done, I pray. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. All right, uh, looking there tonight, if you've got your prayer sheets with you, uh, we will look and share a few things together here. Uh, Mr. Wimberning didn't get your brother Sam's name on the list. I'm sorry about that, but we do want to remember Mr. Paul and, and David. They lost their brother. Uh, my understanding of those services is going to be Friday evening, like at 6 o'clock in Memphis there. And so be in prayer for them uh, as well. Uh, the David Jackson family we do have there, and then Miss Nadine Maples family, which is Trisha's sister. Uh, we have those names that, uh, that are listed there tonight uh, of families that have lost loved ones. And so do you know of anybody else? Yes, sir.
His name is Joel, and he's passed away. So Miss Janice's brother-in-law, okay, Miss Janice's brother-in-law, Joel, has passed away. And uh, we want to pray, pray for them. Let me get my uh, book open back up here. I apologize for that. And uh, for those folks at home, uh, give you that opportunity to uh, go ahead and begin to maybe share some prayer requests that you have with us as well tonight. And uh, if you want to just put those in the comment section, you can. And, and I'll read those out to the folks that are here uh, as you're watching from home and, and the things that are there as well. Um, any others that may have lost a loved one that you know of? Okay. Uh, some others that we have then, you see uh, Mr. Larry's name there, Mr. P Larry Pickle, and uh, recovering from his surgery, uh, talking with Miss Dorothy today. If everything goes well through the night, he's hoping to come home tomorrow. Okay, so he uh, was up and, and had some good, you know, eating and doing all the things, and, uh, and they're hopefully, you know, they're ready to come home anyway. I'll say it that way. Uh, and trying to rest at home and recover more at home. And so pray that he'll have a good night and that everything goes well and, and they can maybe get back home tomorrow. That would be a, a good, good thing. Uh, Miss Wanda as well talked to her daughter today. And uh, if everything goes well with her as well, they're hoping she's going to come home tomorrow. Uh, she'll finish some therapy. Uh, I'm sure probably have some more therapy at home and such, but she's uh, has done a really tremendous job from everything I understand, uh, you know, with the leg that was broken and uh, just kind of blown the, uh, all the, the records, so to speak, and done a great job with her therapy there. And so we're hoping that she can get back home. And uh, there's just something about getting back home that makes you feel that much better. And uh, for I know for Miss Wanda and Brother Larry, they both would uh, love to be back home uh, too. Uh, thinking about the Miss Wanda and the Yop family, uh, Lana's there, uh, had broken her collarbone. Uh, they have not done a surgery or anything yet. The doctor's wanting to wait a little bit longer uh, to see if they have to do surgery. Uh, you know, I guess it may take care of itself as far as healing if, if it's in the right place or whatever the case. So as of today, at least, they had not decided to do that surgery yet. Uh, they may end up having to do it, but they, uh, they didn't want to unless they really, really had to. And so they're going to give it a, just a little bit longer uh, to see if they can, uh, if it'll take care of itself without having to go through surgery as well. Uh, of course, she's not in the hospital and just kind of, that's kind of where we were uh, from that. Do we know of anybody else in the hospital, though, tonight you want to mention? Anybody else in the hospital? Okay, uh, just some other things that I, I've heard about. Uh, I know Mr. Dan Campbell had a little accident and messed a, a finger up and, and cut it real bad and had to have some surgery and some things done on a finger. Uh, and, and so he's back home and, and resting and recovering. And I think they spent a, an evening and a day or so in the hospital there or something like that. But uh, just pray that, that that hand and finger, I guess, will recover and uh, that they can all rest, and Miss Janie and everything will be okay there. Uh, Ma'am? Uh, Dan Campbell? Okay. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to stop right there and just kind of open the floor for anybody that you may have that you want to, uh, names that you want to share with us tonight. Pray, continue to pray for Miss Irene and, and some of the health issues that she has and uh, praying for her. Uh, we were able to see uh, Sunday night, uh, Mr. Larry and Miss Liz were able to join us. First time they've been out uh, with her with COVID and all the things that's gone on with their family. And so uh, they snuck in and got on the back row back there Sunday night. And so uh, we were glad to have the Bennetts with us uh, here uh, Sunday evening as well. And so praying for them, praying for others that have been sick and so many things that have happened through this last year 
uh, of COVID and everything else as well. So, yes, sir. Randy Moss, Brandy. Okay, so Brandy Moss has some blood clots. Okay. Okay, that's, that's good that she didn't break anything. So, uh, Mr. David, Ms. Hilda Campbell as well, continuing to pray for them. Ms. Uh, Brandy Moss with uh, having some blood clots in her legs and things. We've been at us to, to continue, of course, to pray for her things that are, are happening there as well. Uh, just as a little side note, kind of give you a moment to think about everything that's happening. And if you, you know, think of somebody else, you just see a few announcements that's listed here. And for those folks at home, uh, nominating committee will be this Sunday afternoon about 3 o'clock there in the conference room. Uh, this, this, you know, be the 28th. But then on Sunday, the 7th, March the 7th, uh, we are going to have uh, our Sunday school time at 945 to 1015, have a kind of condensed, a little shortened Sunday school, kind of like what we've been having. Uh, but we're going to go back to one worship service the first Sunday in March, uh, on March the 7th. And so that'll be at 1030. And just kind of make note of that. Uh, of course, we'll continue to live stream uh, and all of, the, all of our services, both Sunday morning and Sunday night uh, as well. And so you have that opportunity uh, but as God leads and as you ready and feel good and maybe you've got your vaccine or, or whatever, wear that mask, all those things. Uh, if you feel led, uh, we're going to spread out across our sanctuary and use the balcony and, and uh, get everybody in in one service. And so uh, looking forward to that and uh, to just being together. Uh, I know we've got some folks that have been, been our 830 crowd the whole time. And we've got some folks that have been our 1030 crowd the whole time. And y'all need to look at each other. Y'all had not looked at each other in, in quite a while. And so uh, we, need to, we need to be able to come back together. And looking forward to that, uh, again, you know, if you don't feel good, please stay home. If, you know, use the uh, wipes and things for your hands when you come in and put that mask on going in and out and stuff like that. And, and we're just going to worship together. Uh, you'll also see Annie Armstrong is mentioned there, the week of prayer. Uh, you know, the first Sunday in April, I believe, is, is uh, Easter Sunday. And uh, cause, so we're leading up to uh, Annie Armstrong Easter offering and all of those things uh, and all of that money for our home missionaries as well. And so just a couple of little announcements and things that are happening uh, within our church and our church family uh, through this time. Uh, what may be, or do you have any other prayer request tonight? I do see Miss Charlotte uh, has said uh, Mr. Barry Smith, uh, which is Chad's dad, uh, has had lung, lung surgery today in Jackson and so far is doing good. And so uh, we want to pray for Mr. Barry, uh, Chad's dad there. Any other prayer requests that you guys have? As always, we continue to just pray for our church and our church family. We pray for our community, our school, and school systems that we have here. Uh, we pray for those first responders and nurses and doctors and, and just everybody, everyone in our, our health care system. Uh, we pray for those that are, are dealing with uh, cancer and different issues there. Uh, I know Miss Linda is supposed to go. Uh, I believe Friday morning early to have a PET scan, and so we want to pray for her and Mr. Ronnie. Pray that uh, that it will have some results that they want to have. Uh, we're hoping to see some things have shrunk, and you know that the chemo is working, and all of those things like that. And so pray if you just you know pray now, but also if you think about it on Friday morning, just say a little prayer uh, for Miss Linda and, and for Brother Ronnie and the whole family as they're going through this process. Uh, there together as well. You see other names that we have and folks that have just been sick and those at home and, and in our nursing homes and different folks there uh, that we continue to be in prayer for. 
uh, over and over again. And we don't take that lightly, uh, even though we may not mention every single name that may be here, uh, but we don't take it lightly. And we just want to pray for our church and community and, and church family as best we can. So last call, if you have anything else you want to mention out loud or if you're at home uh, and if you've got anything you want to mention at home real quickly. Anything else? All right. But if you don't have anything else, we're going to just take a few moments together tonight and pray. Uh, Brother Charles, I'm going to ask if you don't mind tonight, if you would just begin to voice a prayer for us. If you feel led tonight to pray, to do so openly, I invite you to do so. Maybe there's just, uh, maybe there's one something special on your heart and you just want to take, you know, 10 seconds to voice a prayer out loud. Uh, I, I know God hears all our prayers. He does. And I know we can think the thoughts in our mind and he knows what we think. I understand that. But there is just something special, I believe, when we just voice a prayer out loud. And so if there is something, especially near and dear to your heart, if you feel led, okay, if you feel led to do so, just say it out loud. Take that moment and say it and pray for it. And then in a few moments, I'll close for us. Thank you, Brother Charles.
Father, we do thank you for having an opportunity to be together tonight, to pray together. Father, we thank you for just you being here and you hear and you answer our prayers, Father. Father, we humbly come before you tonight. Uh, Father, we don't have the right words to say and we, we, we forget things and forget people that are hurting and, and need prayer and Father, we are so inadequate as we come before you. But, Father, thank you so much that even though we forget and we are just who we are, oh, Father, thank you that you are who you are. You are a Father who loves us and who, who, who takes care of us and watches after us. And, Father just hears and, and answers our prayers and knows our hearts and so many things, Father, that, that are even beyond us. We are, we are so overwhelmed, Father, by how much you love us. And so we thank you. We thank you for this evening and some time together here, Father. I thank you for our children that are here tonight and our kids, our youth, our Bible studies, Father, in other areas of our church, all of those things that are happening. Father, for those who, have, who, are, who are volunteering and putting forth some time and effort and energy tonight, Father, just so that, that uh, everybody can be here. And Father, they're teaching our kids about Jesus and, and it's learning, learning ourselves of your word. And Father, may we never take for granted the blessing of being able to come to church, to pray, to be in your presence, and, and the, the joy of being in the presence of fellow believers. Father, you've, you've heard us mention names tonight, individuals who, who some who are families who are missing and, and dealing with the loss of loved ones. Father, some who are dealing with just some terrible pain and agony and hospital stays and different things of that nature. Father, some who are fighting illnesses that have, have overtaken their bodies and some have been fighting for weeks or months or years even. Father, we, we take all of this, all of these prayer requests, spoken and, and unspoken, Father, we just lay them at your feet. And we ask humbly, Father, that your will be done. Father, we, we pray for mercy, for grace, for healing. But, oh, Father, we know that you love us no matter what. And so, Father, bless us. Keep us safe. As we go throughout this week, Father, and, and kids are in school and folks traveling back and forth to work and Father, as we approach other people, I pray that we'll all be safe and, Father, nobody gets sick and no accidents happen. And, Father, we just have a chance to, to come back together Sunday as a family of believers and worship you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father, for all that you do for us. We praise your name. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Thank you all for coming. For those at home, thank you for tuning in as well. May God bless each and every one of us the rest of this week. If you need anything, please don't hesitate to call. And uh, remember this Sunday, now we've got 8.30 and 10.30, last Sunday that we're going to have two separate worship services on Sunday morning. But you've got that opportunity this Sunday to come join us and so we hope to see you there. Thank you. God bless.